Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are going to examine the finance function within the CAPSIM capstone simulation. In the finance function, you're determining how to fund your operations. Even when a business is profitable, it's likely to need cash injections to expand. As your business grows in subsequent rounds, you may be flush with cash and that's not the case, but if you wish to expand in early rounds, it's very possible that you'll need money to fund your operations. So what are your options for funding within the capstone simulation? You can use debt or equity. Equity represents issuing stock in your firm. You have two options for debt current debt, which represents a one-year bank loan. You can see a 9.9% .9 interest rate associated with that. Long-term debt is a 10-year bond represented by 11.3% interest rate. So let's think for a moment about the cost associated with debt and equity. Beginning with debt, what is the cost associated with debt? Very simple. The cost associated with debt is the interest. Whether you take out a bank loan, a one-year bank loan, or issue a bond, you're expected to pay back the principal amount plus some interest. The interest rates are defined for you. Now let's consider equity, issuing stock in your firm. What costs are associated with that? I often hear students suggest that the cost is the dividend that we must offer. That is incorrect. A firm isn't obligated to issue a dividend, but there are costs. And that cost is the potential for appreciation. We can conceptualize this by thinking about Facebook. Initially, Mark Zuckerberg was seeking $1,000, $1,000 investments in exchange for an ownership position in Facebook. If you would have invested $1,000 initially, you'd be a millionaire today. I suppose we should pause for a moment and think about what equity is. Equity is exchanging capital, money, for a piece of ownership in the firm. With that piece of ownership comes some control, unless it's qualified not to include control, but generally when we give up ownership, we're giving up some control as well. The cost is the potential for appreciation in that piece of ownership. Within the capstone simulation, you have a price per share. In the first round, you begin at a price per share or a stock price of $34.25. By the conclusion of the simulation, the stock price very well may be $340. So you sell it for $34. If you wanted to retire uh, shares, you would need to pay $340. There are also consequences associated with issuing stock, and that is many of your performance metrics are driven by the number of shares outstanding. Think about earnings per share for a moment. We're currently at $0.65. That is calculated by the number of shares outstanding and divided by our earning. When we increase the number of shares outstanding, it's going to reduce our earnings per share. How you fund your operations should be a group decision based on some strategy. Let's briefly revisit current debt and long-term debt. You may be tempted by current debt because of a lower interest rate. But there are risks associated with current debt. As I mentioned, at the end of the year, you're expected to pay those monies back, the principal amount plus interest. If your performance does not go as intended, you may not have the money to pay back that loan. In the real world, you very well might be bankrupt, Within the simulation, you can always have an emergency loan. The emergency loan provided to you is by a loan shark, Big Al, who charges higher interest rates. 
If you find yourself in that position, it represents poor cash management. You're going to take a hit in the financial markets, but it's also going to increase your interest rate. If you've shown an inability to pay back the money you borrow, people aren't as inclined to loan you money. You're going to have to pay for that money, more for that money in the form of a higher interest rate. Whereas long-term debt locks you in to an interest rate for the duration of the loan. If you find yourself in a position where you're flush with cash, you can retire your debt, you can buy back your shares, and your current debt you always have to pay back at the end of the year. It's recommended that you fund long-term investments with either equity or long-term debt, and you fund short-term investments with current debt. Long-term investments include things like capacity, automation. Short-term investments include things like materials, labor costs. Ultimately, how you fund your operations is a capital policy and should be determined within your group. When making the decision to borrow money or not borrow money or retire debt, you need to look at your estimated cash position. You can see your cash position at the beginning of the year, or the end of the previous round rather, and what is anticipated to be, or what is forecasted to be at the end of this round. We can see that this particular group, which is not a student-operated group, is expected to be in the red. They're expected to have a cash balance of negative $2,167,000. As you would expect, this firm needs to borrow money so they can remain solvent and have cash to operate. I would encourage you to begin with a cash position of between five and 10 million. 10 million provides a nice buffer in case things don't go as planned. This is just a forecast and forecasts could be wrong. Think of a scenario where you had forecasted your sales, but that forecast is inaccurate and you don't sell all the sensors you produce. That's going to put you in a position where you don't have as much cash as anticipated. So 10 million provides a nice buffer. You may think that you should have a lot of money in the bank and are issuing stock or taking on debt to have a big cash balance. That's poor cash management. I would love to have a big fat bank account, $100 million in my bank account. But there's an opportunity cost to holding that money. Rather than having that money idle in a bank account, I should be investing that money to earn a return on that money, to grow my wealth. So, you know, 10 million is a good ending balance to begin with. You can adjust it up or down. You know, in some cases, you may see that there's a lot of variance in your actual performance and your actual ending cash balance. So you want a bigger buffer, that's fine. Or you know, if you're earning money, you may wish to save money to invest in the future. You know, I'm not going to comment on the different comment on the prudence of different strategies. That's for you to determine. But examine your cash balance. Uh, if you're in the red like this team, determine how you're going to get out of the red. Borrow money, issue stock, issue long-term debt, do something to get out of the red. The final decision on the, under the finance function is your accounts receivable and accounts payable black. Your accounts receivable is effectively a short-term loan from you to your buyers, to the buyers of your sensors. Your customers want a longer lag. They want to be able to buy the sensor and wait longer to pay for that sensor. It impacts your customer survey score. If you reduce your accounts receivable lag, 
It's going to reduce your customer survey score. Your buyers aren't going to be as pleased with you and they aren't going to buy to the same extent. I'm not going to go through at what days will there be this percentage of drop. And that's recorded for you in the member's guide and I would encourage you to look at that. Your accounts payable lag is how long after you purchase inputs do you have to pay your suppliers? Your suppliers want to be paid. If you increase this account's payable lag, you'll find yourself in a position where your suppliers don't provide the inputs. This is a problematic situation in that you'll be expecting these supplies, you'll have production schedule, but you won't have materials to manufacture. You'll have idle workers, people standing around with nothing to manufacture. So again, look at your member's guide and determine exactly you know, at how many days will there be this percentage decrease in the materials supplied to us. With that, I will conclude the discussion on the finance function in the capstone simulation. Thank you for joining me.